Hello there, I'm Mount Payne 27 and this is Dean of Doom, the show where we give grades to classic and contemporary Doom wads. Why? Because ranking things is fun. Today's episode will be dedicated to Epic 2, a megawad released in 2010 by Alexander S, aka Eternal, and the sequel to 2007's CAC Award winning Epic. After three prolific and celebrated years in the Doom community, Eternal released his most ambitious work yet, joining the elite yet elusive One Man Megawad Club. Eternal elected to work under vanilla constraints, quite the concession for a Boom enthusiast, but one that reduced the number of lines he had to draw and sparked some creative workarounds that wowed players in its day. Epic 2 is less a sequel than Epic. Epic 1 is a prologue. Context clues suggest the two wads might not even have the same protagonist. Of course, the expositional details are less important than the experience. If you've played Hellground, then you're already familiar with Eternal's mastery of unspoken storytelling, but that was an arthouse short film compared to the blockbuster feature that is Epic 2. So get some popcorn and settle in. Here's how the show works. Every map gets one grade for quality and one for difficulty. Quality grades go from A to F. Grade A levels are fun, memorable, visually distinctive, creative, and a fair challenge. We grade difficulty from X to E. X for extreme, E for easy, A through D in between. Keep in mind, my idea of a great map is probably not the same as yours, but that's okay. Disagreeing is part of the fun, after all. At the end of the day, this show is about spreading the joy of doom, so let's do so. Before we start, the rules are we play on ultra violence and must pistol start each level. I need to play the wad twice before reviewing it, saves are allowed, and we go for 100% kills in all levels, making exceptions when it's just not worth it. I play on Z Doom, and today's compatibility is vanilla. Now, to the wad. Map 1, Entrance. A warm and welcoming tone setter, Entrance to the Secret finds Indiana Doom Guy armed for an archaeological adventure. Before too long, you'll rouse the inhabitants of this ancient tomb. Junior treasure hunters should beware this surprise revenant and the pinky powwow. Out of Eternal's whole custom asset rich body of work, I like his Epic 2 replacements the most. The new status bar, fancy pickups, and custom textures pulled from various classic shooters infuse his megawatt with all kinds of personality. It never gets old when the zombies say, What the? upon spotting you. And I love that no matter what surface you fall onto, it always sounds like you're hitting kitchen floor. One other neat touch, every time you find armor bonuses in this wad, it's actually 10 stacked on top of each other. My only complaint with Entrance is it misrepresents Epic 2 as a puzzle-themed wad. It's nowhere near as confusing as Eternal's namesake. Grade B+, difficulty D-. Map 2, Voodoo. There were no secrets in Map 1, so I didn't get to talk about my favorite Epic 2 sound effect. That's right. This sound effect elevates even the most mundane secrets and scratches an itch for corny 90s-ness that I never knew I had. There are five that's rights in this map, including a Berserk Pack and Power Slave's Flamethrower repurposed as a rocket launcher. Voodoo is an Epic 2 combat crash course. Uninquisitive players will be relegated to low-tier weapons and given less ammo, so always be curious. The Archvile makes an early debut here, as does the overcooked meatball and his screeching spawn. as if we needed one more reason to kill these suckers quickly. Grade A-, minus, difficulty D+. Plus. Footnote, remember, scarabs are secrets, but birds, beware. Map 3, Black Magic. Black Magic hits mostly the same beats as Voodoo, stashing secret items around the map to help the sharp-eyed player better handle occasional splashes of meanness. The rocket launcher is invaluable for extinguishing this arch file in the Temple Commons. You'll probably run short on shells later if you miss it. The way Eternal borders his switches with red is somewhat sinful, since no keys are necessary to activate them, but that's my only gripe here. Since I have no other commentary on Black Magic specifically, I'll just add that I can't get enough of this Megawad's crisp lighting and color choices. Also, this has got to be one of the best curated, non-original Doom Wad soundtracks of all time. This particular cut is from Final Fantasy IX, and you'll hear selections from Duke Nukem, Daggerfall, Hexen, Metroid Fusion, Xenogears, Blood, and more before we're through. Grade B+, difficulty D+. Map 4, Sarcophagus. Nothing like a bit of grave robbery to make Doom Guy's afternoon. Sarcophagus blends together with the other haunted crypt maps in this set. That's the one minor drawback of Epic 2. It does tend to repeat itself, at least visual design-wise. I like this dark chamber near the end, with its gentle, torch-lit perimeter and spooky side passages, but the ending feels like a misstep. Eternal drops a hapless spider mastermind on you and the last archfile is stuck behind bars. I missed a bunch of secrets here and still had no trouble. Grade B, difficulty D+. Map 5, Abu Ghurab. Oh my god, they killed Kenny! You bastards! Epic 2's cheeriest map so far kicks off on a desert temple shootout. Bring sunblock, because it's 120 Fahrenheit in the shade and all the fireballs aren't helping matters. Abu Ghurab's simple layout belies Eternal's increasingly tricky secrets. Crossing this line def quietly reveals Berserk, and there's a green armor at the start behind Kenny's scooped-out brains. 
That's right, the Baron Treasure Room fight can get tense, but resist the urge to spend all your rockets because there's a troublesome Archvile Revenant duo loaded in the chamber right after it. I've always liked this map. It boosts Epic 2's energy level and starts to make its secrets feel less like freebies. Grade A-, difficulty C. Map 6, Revived Bones. Look out! <laughs> For players who still haven't gotten with the secret hunting program, Eternal is no longer asking. Minus this ammo stash and or the secret zerk, which opens when you press on an urn, ammo starvation is inevitable. Ideally, you'll find both before testing your luck with this hallway encounter. The caged imps will harangue you and teleport willy-nilly, while several hit scanners and pinkies, a hell knight, a revenant, and an archvile sweep the leg. This can quickly turn into a save the last bullet for yourself situation if you're low on resources. The rest of the map is more hospitable. Just keep looking for peculiarities in the set decoration. I'm not sure why the super shotgun isn't labeled a secret. It's easy to miss, really helpful, and fairly out of the way. Revived Bones is one of Epic 2's acquired tastes. Grade B, difficulty B. Map 7, Hellguard. Call me a sucker for desert-themed dead simples, but this and Scythe 2's are two of my favorites in the genre. Hellguard starts slow, giving you a rocket launcher, SSG, and a pair of actually useful blur spheres to eliminate a gaggle of imps, two respawning chain gunners, and the mancubi. There's too much space and ammo for the arachnos to fry you unless you're brain dead, or simple, and after a quick catacomb detour, you'll be whisked back to the arena for one more blowout with two busy arch files. Hellguard is good, clean fun. Grade B+, plus, difficulty C+. Plus. Map 8, Karnak Temple. One of the most uneven installments in the first episode, Karnak Temple gives you a pickle to negotiate right away. Two Hell Knights guard the front door, and you have nothing to kill them with, unless you inspect the wall by this floor tile and go get the super shoddy. Hmm. Karnak Temple's action is mostly low-key, and its ambush is well telegraphed. As per usual, secret hunting refills your coffers and pays dividends in fun. It's a prudent move to lead future corpses away from this room's central pillar and the teleport landing by the Red Key. Guess why? Karnak wears eternal doom on its sleeve here, borrowing Rich Nagel's most exotic midi and hiding a shootable face switch in the dark behind bars. Compared to the real thing, that's nothing. I love this sunny showdown with a cyber demon, several respawning chain gunners, some mancubi, and a lot of cannon fodder which two archviles will try vainly to revive when you open the pyramid. The segue from corridor crawl to all-out war is sudden for sure, but it breathes life into an otherwise slightly musty map. Grade A-, minus, difficulty B-. Minus. Map 9, Mystery. Laid back and methodical, Mystery sends you underground again for a good old-fashioned key hunt. I must be an archaeologist, because even after nine Egypt maps in a row, I still dig this theme. Stay on your toes in this one. The rocket launcher's obviously a trap, but Eternal blocks your escape with Zombief. This toasty chamber will test your footwork when sniper revenants and hit scanners come to call, and Eternal's famous teleporting chain gunner circus can sap your health before the final fight. It's a wily and wicked one. Three archfiles warp in back to back to back, followed by a pair of chain gunners, some revenants, and a manky bellboy at the bottom. The secret manka sphere that rewards a leap of faith in the soul sphere behind this trick wall will greatly alleviate your health concerns, and Eternal doesn't hide any tools critical to your survival this time. Quick disclaimer, I'm not handing out a ton of A's right now, but this first episode is greater than the sum of its parts. Eternal builds his world brick by brick, and when he's done, it's a sight to behold. Grade B+, difficulty C+. Map 10, Goldmine. Goldmine harkens back to the third map of the original epic. It's long, comparatively non-linear, uses the same midi, and ends in a train tunnel. This might be the banner map of the first episode. Slow-burning puzzlers are Eternal's wheelhouse. I like how he lets the player approach the start with stealth. You can surprise these grunts from the sewers and bag a secret green armor if you check the other side of the bridge. Speaking of secrets, rubbing the belly of another urn unlocks the rocket launcher, which will come in handy later. Just remember, if you didn't clear out the hallway way ahead, there's only one way to leave this secret. Forgetting to bop this switch left me wondering dumbly how to raise these bars for about seven minutes. I neglected the golden rule of Epic 2, which is never leave a switch for later when you can hit it now. Opening those bars leads to the aesthetic high point of the megawatts so far. This magma chamber houses the yellow key. Thankfully, it's much less precarious than it is gorgeous. Goldmine goes out with a hit scannery hullabaloo and a platforming bunny slope before finishing with two obligatory arch files and the sight of some familiar rails. It's about time Epic 2 earned its title. Grade A- minus. Difficulty B. Map 11, The Tower. Essentially a downsized remake of Epic 1's final map, The Tower lacks the Citadel's grandeur, being manacled to vanilla constraints, and hits more wrong notes than its bombastic big brother, even with a shorter runtime. The desert expanses are devoid of life and suspense, the puzzle-solving junctures feel obligatory, and players unaware of The Tower's more hostile quirks will be severely punished. For example, if you leave too many roaming baddies alive, they can cluster around where you pop out of the ruins and screw you over. Also, killing the Spider Queen before you get the BFG is not a good idea. And 
then there's this really odd sequence at the end where you're forced to solve a switch riddle before you asphyxiate? It seems like Eternal punts on combat in the tower's second half. This Baron and Hell Knight flock stands out as the most ineffectual and disgracefully easy fight in his entire corpus. I like what the tower represents, Epic 2's exciting transition to its second theme, but in execution, it's kind of a dud. Grade C+, difficulty B+. Map 12, Alien Ship. Well, I'll be damned. Ancient aliens ripped off Epic 2. Turns out the demonic trespassers are extraterrestrial in origin. Leaving Egypt far behind, Eternal draws inspiration from Icarus, Alien Vanguard, and Equinox, as well as Star Trek and James Cameron's Alien franchise to fuel his sci-fi vision. After escaping the irradiated docking bay, he'll be bio-scanned and fired upon by strange new enemies. It's over there. Like Skillsaw's stealth aliens, these reskinned Wolfenstein SS are invisible until they shoot at you with their shoulder mounted guns. Their death sound is also hilarious. <laughs> Once you deactivate the force field locking up your super shoddy, things get relatively serious. Alien ship is sparsely populated, but the ETs attack unexpectedly, often popping out of cabinets or beaming in without warning. Step lightly in this noxious jungle gym to come away with a yellow key, and don't miss the fake wall soul sphere. The secret plasma gun, accessed with a clever nod to eternal doom, will be a big help in the final room. A UFO parking lot guarded by a mastermind, stealth troopers, and a skeleton crew. This map grabbed me with both hands the first time I played it, and I still adore the new world that drops us into. Grade A, difficulty B-. Map 13, Mebius, in which Eternal tips his cap to BPRD. Mebius's concept and MIDI are lifted directly from Equinox's infamous art file map. The freaky texturing, uncomfortable layout, and weird decor try to confuse and rattle the player in order to mask its relatively high bark-to-bite ratio. If you stand your ground, don't get snagged on walls, and make your shots count, it's possible to beat this map without taking a hit. Not that you'll need to. Scattered around the ship are six kiosks which dispense 20 20 health potions a pop, and you can find a secret berserk in Soul Sphere if you're looking closely for switches. If you can't scare up the plasma rifle, try to use the rocket launcher before you run out of shells. It's better to have the luxury of getting in a vial's face when you're out of space to run. Once the flame boys have all been extinguished, return to the start, where one might mistake Epic 2 for a boom wad. I can only imagine the off-screen voodoo chicanery required to end a vanilla map mid-elevator ride. Grade B+, difficulty C. Map 14, Orion's Belt. A slow-cooked space odyssey with a side of puzzle-solving, Orion's Belt is a quietly brilliant work of mapping minimalism. Only Eternal could have wrought such a rich world with so few lines. The custom textures do a lot of work for him, but Eternal's MIDI selection, sparse monster placement, and opaque progression make Orion's Belt feel utterly forsaken. What is this place, anyway? An abandoned extraterrestrial nesting ground? Some kind of interstellar crossroads? Suffice to say, Eternal's best work begs more questions than it's willing to answer. Orion's Belt might take you a long time to finish on your first run. It takes more than a few cues from Alexander S.'s namesake 90s Megawad, but I'd still classify even its trickiest sequences as Eternal Doom Light. Pay attention to diver helmets, explore every cranny, taking note of any symbols you uncover, and don't test the power of voodoo. The combat speaks only in whispers and shouts. The archfile duo guarding the red key has no doubt ruined many a pair of pants, and the BFG fight looks totally overwhelming until you notice the BFG. It's a shame Eternal coddles you with an invuln at the end, which neuters the quad cyber battle and subsequent murder of revenants. I could play an entire megawatt of otherworldly dungeon delves like this. Grade A, difficulty B. Map 15, Astral Base. A sleek infiltration mission that took me a few clears to warm up to, Astral Base is ornately textured and wrought with scientific precision. Eternal's latest bit of vanilla wizardry comes in the form of these red laser beams, which will kill you instantly on contact. They need to be deactivated before you can storm the compound. Ammo's a bit thin in the first half, so encourage infighting whenever you can. This herd of hell nobles is especially unworthy of your shotgun shells. Even in the smoothest playthroughs, the numerous snipers placed above your view are pretty discomforting, and it's safe to say I'm getting tired of fighting revenants in tight spaces. Astral Base culminates in a wild infight party with skeletons, barons, and hell knights, which I like to pretend I cloned specifically to fight the cyberdemon. After slaughtering the last outfit of space rangers, you're faced with two portals. The secret red one requires some finagling to access. Open this air shaft, press this lever, activate the terminal, teleport, and you're homeward bound. Grade A-, difficulty B+. Map 31, Osirion. It would seem to go against logic, but I 
I dread playing Eternal's Misery Halek tribute. If you thought the start of Kim Andre Malva's map was impolite, wait till you boot up Osirion. If you miss the secret shotgun, you have to weasel past imps, specters, a caco, and a few zombies with a handful of bullets. Even with the pump action, it's easy to burn all your ammo on the Hell Knight, Pinky, and Baron blockade that lies ahead. You can box them to save on supplies, but that's not a whole lot of fun either. Even if you're not as hopeless at navigation as I am, Osirion is slow going, and Eternal makes life unpleasant if you try to bull moose through his encounters. On the whole, the action here is sparser than Misery Halex, and while I respect Eternal for adding his own seasoning to rewrites of Malva's encounters, this teleporting Cyberdemon stairway fight is for the birds, and the lazy BFG binge at the end doesn't fare much better. Suffice to say, comparing Osirion to Alien Vendetta's Egyptian opus harms it more than it helps. Grade B, difficulty B+. Map 32, The Harbor. With a mere 64 monsters and no particular gimmick to make it stand out, The Harbor feels like an odd choice for the super secret slot. Probably an unfinished map idea that Eternal decided to make optional. Don't waste ammo on these chain gunner and revenant turrets until you kill their vile puppeteers. Escaping the Cyberdemon Fort releases them into the village, instigating the only noteworthy encounter in the map. The Harbor is comfy but skippable. Grade C+, difficulty C+. Map 16, DNA Replicate. I thought Epic 2 was supposed to be easy. The overwhelming DNA replicate left a very negative impression on my first playthrough, but I've since learned to embrace its chaotic nature. For most of the map, you'll be on the run from heavily armed demonic patrols in a giant hangar, looking for keys and weapons, and listening for Admiral Sibe's heavy footsteps. Corralled correctly, he's tantamount to a friendly NPC, but if and when he runs out of littler demons to bully, look out. Some things about DNA replicate I'm still not a fan of. The backpack is stowed with a revenant in this non-secret secret closet. The respawning chain gunners are an irritating health tax, and it's hard not to get turned around in such a homogeneous environment, especially under pressure. This thrilling archfile sneak attack reinforced by a chain gunner company is one of the map's high points, and the Cybe triumvirate at the end is quite the shock to the system. Grade A-, difficulty A-. Map 17, Hologram. After the hubbub of Map 16, a wind-down is welcome, but Hologram is the only level in Epic 2's middle episode that feels like a misstep to me. The first thing that feels off is the use of Epic 2's title screen music. Nothing about Hologram qualifies it to be the set's signature map, and I don't see any other reason to double up on the Metroid MIDI. Non-layup fights like this swath of stealth troopers and sentry archfiles become quite uncomfortable if you don't dig up the secret weapons, and I know it's pointless to ask Eternal to stop it with the revenants and barons and narrow hallways, but still, the horse is dead. Even the secrets feel cheaper than usual. This panel behind the Macubus reveals a path to two of them, and opening this vent also lowers the wall between you and the rocket launcher. I had to look that one up. This hangar with a conveniently unattended shuttle is Hologram's best feature. It's a great trend transitional set piece. Grade B-, difficulty B-. Map 18, Gunman. If you're using a source port that supports it, Gunman's non-MIDI soundtrack is the first thing that will get your attention. It's the end credits music to an 80s sci-fi flick called Space Hunter Adventures in the Forbidden Zone. Eternal is one of the best mixtape compilers in the Doomverse, and this might be his most inspired pick in Epic 2. At first I felt a bit silly wandering around with Elmer Bernstein's boisterous brass in the background, but I've come to believe it's the ideal companion for this map. It makes you feel like you're moonwalking in the Wild West, and plays off the action with just the right amount of cheese. Gunman doesn't squeeze you too hard if you're quick on the draw with hit scanners and remember to check those corners. The high contrast lunar lighting enriches the environment, and eternal secrets are particularly satisfying to find. Gunman's messy conclusion, a high noon duel in a dank hangar with two Archies and a Cyber, almost breaks its spell. Gunman is delightful and disarming. I don't expect everybody to like it as much as I do, but I'm charmed by the idea of a Doom map playing like an old space opera. Grade A, difficulty C+. Map 19, Escape. Pivoting from the whimsical to the deadly serious with remarkable assurance, Escape is one of Epic 2's most ominous maps. This is the only time you'll see me treat stealth troopers with any respect. Health and ammo are sparse in the facility, and you might have to default to the pistol if you can't track down the secret chain gun or backpack. Once again, don't touch the laser bars or you rest in pieces. Sprung from the alien compound, you find yourself in one of this megawad's most memorable settings, a silent city draped in painterly shadow and stalked by creatures of the night. Taking shelter inside this apartment complex ratchets up the creep factor even further, with lifeless hallways, swinging doors, and backstabbing tenants. With the blue key in your possession, you can charge the town square, open the exit, and take on an archfile trifecta, a cyber, and some lingering monster window dressing. It helps that I'm obsessed with this midi, but escape strikes a chord. It's a perfect cocktail of adrenaline and dread. 
Grade A, Difficulty B. Map 20, Anomaly Zone. This experimental episode ender lets Eternal's freak flag unfurl. The map itself is a strictly linear event, but its encounters are as bizarre and difficult as any in the Megawad to this point. It's not easy to avoid getting mauled by the army of imps, hell knights, cacos, and skeletal snipers, and the archvile encores will rattle players who aren't expecting them. Ammo might get tight in the lava chute, but fear not. Eternal will load you up right before the yellow key boogie. Final fight is a bit of a wonky anticlimax. Bring up old beeves between the spider queens, pop the cacos that spew from their corpses, and that's all she wrote. Anomaly Zone's kooky midi, unhinged set pieces, and high body count make an angry first impression, and though I still don't love playing it, I jive with the eccentricity. Grade B minus, difficulty A minus. <laughs> Map 21, Shore Dream. The aliens are over and done with, but it's anybody's guess whether you ended up in paradise or purgatory in the wake of their destruction. More than any other map in Epic 2, Shore Dream places atmosphere at the foreground. Only inquisitive players will puncture the peaceful veneer, though the starry sky, placid palms, and gorgeous midi almost convince me to eat the lotus. Investigate this bookshelf, shoot this switch, and pull the chain to get a blue key, which unlocks the garage where you'll find some power tools and a pair of zombies operating a strange machine. Picking up the yellow key permanently shatters the illusion, and triggers multiple ambushes en route to the pyramid where one scary archfile encounter awaits. Shore Dream is a beguiling beauty, and perfectly weighted for its slot. Grade A, difficulty D+. Map 22, Mummy Tomb. Deeply inspired by Scythe 2's Egyptian episode Closer, Mummy Tomb has one of the most hostile openings in the Megawad. Weapons and ammo are thoroughly hidden away, so tread lightly and keep an eye out for clues. The shootable skull switch that raises steps up to the shotgun sarcophagus is not a secret, which seems like Eternal's way of saying thanks to those of us who've been paying attention to his secret hiding efforts so far. Do enough snooping and you'll find a berserk, chainsaw, and green armor, which can save your life in this vicious red key trap. If you try to flee from this arch file, you'll run smack into another chain gunner parade. The rest of the map can be dismantled with patience and paranoia, and you're in luck, because Mummy Tomb pumps you full on the ladder without asking permission. It pays to be doom literate. I can better prepare for and enjoy this crazy final room knowing it's an Eric Alm homage. This is one of Eternal's best Egyptian crypt crawls. Deliciously spooky and fun. Grade A-, minus, difficulty B+. Map 23, Oasis, is anything but. Juxtaposed with last map's simmering quiet, Oasis hits like a line of cocaine followed by a punch in the face. I don't think we've seen this many enemies on screen in the whole of Epic 2 so far. Eternal reinforces his sandstone stronghold with Hell Knights, Mancubi, and Revenant artillery, blocks your path with pinkies and barons, and sporadically restarts the party with archviles. The pincer attack on the upper deck is panic-inducing, but it's a picnic compared to the BFG courtyard fight, which is in the top five hardest fights in the Megawad. You can't easily grab the Begone Fiend's gun, because the archvile standing on it will blast you while you're switching weapons, but the courtyard quickly fills with revenants, cacos, and hell knights, making the super weapon mandatory unless you wimp out like I did this time round. It's one of Eternal's most diabolical setups. Oasis always manages to catch me napping, and can come off harsh as a result. Grade B+, plus, difficulty A. Map 24, Henchimenti. I have no idea what the title means, and googling it was no help, because Henchimenti's Doom wiki page is the top hit. One of the Megawad's last pyramid plumbings, Henchimenti reuses Map 4's Peacorf tune, which adds to it feeling like a recap of Eternal's Egyptian tomb theme. Epic 2's lava textures play a gorgeous encore, trick walls, backstabbing ne'er-do-wells, and apparating arch files are a dime a dozen, and Eternal even revives the old teleporting cyber demon trick. Hustle past Cyber Hotep and smack the sun switch to catch him in a crusher trap. This huge chamber full of sniping revenants, hell knights, and arch files is the most memorable room in the map, and quite grand for vanilla. Don't be afraid of falling down, most of the floor doesn't hurt. The imp and archie swarm that gushes from this dying spider demon is a great moment, and you get to meet Eternal's repurposed Commander Keens right after. Save some rockets to solve the riddle, and escape the chamber. Henchimenti is Epic 2 in a nutshell. Its sumptuous visuals, grave ambiance, and deliberate pacing are the mortar that hold this megawad together. Grade A-, difficulty B+. Map 25, Pernefer. Scarabs are secrets, but birds? Beware. A calm before the sandstorm, Pernefer contains the most optional content per square foot in Epic 2. Don't be Rambo. 
be Indiana Jones. This scarily large spider web hides a switch that lowers a berserk, but don't forget about your dead buddy's shotgun at the end of the hall. Believe it or not, this one skull switch provides access to five interconnected secrets, including a soul sphere, the super shotgun, and several side passages with extra enemies. Normally, I don't care for maps that bury so many monsters and secrets, but Eternal absolutely earns it here. This dramatic moment when you disturb forbidden treasure and the floor drops from under you is a must-see. Pernefer's exotic decor and palpable mystery make it one of the most absorbing maps in the set. Grade A-, difficulty C-. Map 26, Luxor. The opening shot of a sand-swept stronghold basking in torchlight, surrounded by an army of revived bones, is one of Epic 2's most dazzling views. With an entire desert to run around in, the Revenant Stampede is all for show or so Eternal would have you believe. After broaching the keep and scaling the outer walls, you'll find a skull switch that lowers a teleporter to the BFG, and grabbing it prompts a brutal ambush of four vials and two cyber demons. It's hard to avoid damage from the Archie Patrol while ducking rockets and rezzed revenants, but this is a BFG you cannot do without. Luxor's fantastic opening is only diminished by the high likelihood of you having to repeat this sequence of switches and slow elevators several times. Next comes the fortress interior, which is scorching hot, loaded with goons, and with bullet holes. Chain gunner flash mobs are Eternal's go-to for increasing the amperage, and you know he's serious when he whips out two in the same map. I can't say I enjoy the cyber cage fight, and I don't know if it's better to waste cells and fight Cybe's replacement one-on-one, -on -one, or to man up, save cells, and risk gibbage. Luxor starts high but ends low, wrapping on a cumbersome door fight with a herd of goats, pain elementals, mancubi, an arch vial with four bonus lives, and a mastermind. Oh, make that two masterminds. And another cyber demon and two archviles. Imagine doing this with no BFG. Luxor's extremity makes it one of the most polarizing maps in the set, but it's got a lot of natural charisma. Grade A-, difficulty A. Map 27, Amut. Amut, Egyptian demoness of punishment known as the Eater of Hearts and the Devourer of the Unworthy Dead. Yep, sounds about right. As much as I respect Eternal's work, he's not the best at plotting difficulty curves. Epic 2's last few maps might aggravate players who enjoyed its more casual buildup. Shorter and feistier than most of Epic 2, Amut throws some bona fide haymakers at you, including the biggest flood of red uniforms I've seen in a vanilla Doom wand and a blowout basement fight that conjures Alien Vendetta Map 29's famous Revenant River. Somehow, this jangly, sitar-led midi suits the carnage better than heavy metal ever could. Death comes swiftly for those who can't manage the madness. It wants for subtlety, but Amut doesn't sacrifice the episode's lush nocturnal atmosphere and should satisfy the bloodlust of challenge seekers who've been bored until now. Grade B+, difficulty A. Map 28. Ogdoad. Time and again, Eternal has proven himself a master of homage. He did it in Plutonia 2's Cyberden remake and TNT Revolution's Deepest Reaches remix, but those maps read like grocery lists compared to the love letter that is Ogdoad. To avoid stealing Team TNT's thunder, I won't delve too deeply into Ogdoad's mechanics. Suffice to say, it draws heavily from Sferi, Andre, Kvernmo, and Bob Evans' work in Eternal Doom. Ogdoad is the Egyptian word for an octet of ancient deities, and mirrors the eight skull switches you'll need to find to finish the map. Ogdoad's cryptic progression never spares the rod. If you want to see the end of this megawad, you have to catch stuff that's obscure enough to be secret tagged. Keep your eyes peeled for shootable switches, switches behind switches, and things that don't belong. The SSG and rocket launcher are hidden, but absolutely not optional. Ammo becomes an issue without them, and you'll need the heavier hardware for the searing home stretch. Get ready for cyber showdowns, chain gunner posses, and Martians galore. Once again, I'm floored by Eternal's ability to orchestrate straight ambushes in vanilla so precisely, and I have no idea how he triggers events like this without boom conveyor belts. I've never not gotten a time sucks in this map, and this recording marks the first time I've swept it clean kills-wise, so you'll definitely want to block out an hour or two before attacking it. Labor-intensive, elusive, and occasionally frustrating, Ogdoad is nearly perfect in its pursuit of what it wants to be. Alexander S.'s statement of purpose, a bow to eternal doom, and Epic 2's greatest riddle. Grade A. 
difficulty A. Map 29, Mortuary. If Ogdoad was the natural culmination of Epic 2's design ethos, Mortuary is one giant f it that manages to simultaneously undermine and upstage Map 28. On one hand, Mortuary is an unhinged slaughter extravaganza that will absolutely crucify players who aren't wise to it. My first playthrough of Epic 2 was gutted like a fish on Mortuary's scythe. On the other hand, Mortuary is so excessive it's almost funny, secrets can extinguish almost all of its scary moments, and it's scored by The Undertaker's theme, which would immediately break the fourth wall for any fan of professional wrestling. It's such a bizarre way to end an adventure wad that I almost doubt it was intended to be played straight. I say this as someone who rarely considers slaughter simplistic. Some of these fights are just silly. The torrential Involm fights test your archfile surfing skills, but require no finesse so long as you don't pop your green bubbles prematurely. This chain gunner conga line feels like a joke told one too many times, and almost every other fight demands to be effing G'd away. I wanted to pass on the secret involve by the blue key because using it feels like cheating, but the only way to handle that fight without it is to run away and bottleneck the revenants, cyber demons, and vials behind a crude monster blocking line. Seriously? For my limited vantage point, it seems like Eternal wanted to make an ultra-challenging map 29, and then changed his mind at the last minute, opting to make an ultra-challenging looking map instead. It's Eternal's strangest map by a mile, and I encourage you to take it with a boulder of salt. Grade B, difficulty A-. Map 30, Amenthes. I'll save you the suspense. Amenthes is the most irrelevant map in Epic 2. It's a totally obligatory icon of sin fight, preceded by some big empty areas, two strange sequences where most of the monsters in the map just telefrag each other, and one non-trivial fight with Mancubi and three cybers. Eternal doesn't even try to follow the one-two punch of Ogdoad and Mortuary. I think these two surprise revenants are winking at the player, as if to say, don't take this too seriously. Don't worry, Eternal. I won't. Grade D, difficulty C. So, Epic 2 is the complete package. It's beautiful, technically virtuosic, plays ball with Doom 2.exe, and balances bursts of furious combat with languid stretches of puzzle solving and exploration. Eternal's dynamite music selections and custom assets brim with character, and his art direction, pacing, and command of tone are akin to that of a film director. On the whole, Epic 2 is probably the most unified megawatt I've played. It has few scene-stealing maps, but a strong overall identity. I admit, Eternal's not great at endings, but that's rarely required for Doom greatness. See also Struggle, Evan Eternity, and Alien Vendetta. Next to TNT Revolution, this is probably my favorite vanilla megawatt of all time, and a stellar Desert Island pick for its variety and replayability. Pun not actually intended. My final grade for Epic 2 is an A. Difficulty-wise, it accelerates towards the end, but for the most part it lingers a cut below the modern standard, so let's give it a B-. Now for my Dean's List. Valedictorian, Map 14, Orion's Belt. Salutatorian is a tie between maps 18 and 19, Gunman and Escape, Class President, Map 28, Ogdoad, and the dunce cap goes to Map 30, Amenthes. Epic 2 definitely deserves an honor roll, so here it is. Map 2, Voodoo. Map 5, Abu Ghurab. Map 8, Karnak Temple. Map 10, Goldmine. Map 12, Alien Ship. Map 15, Astral Base. Map 16, DNA Replicate. Map 21, Shore Dream. Map 22, Mummy Tomb. Map 24, Henchimenti. Map 25, Pernefer. Map 26, Luxor. And Map 28, Ogdoad. Thank you very much for watching, and please feel free to share your thoughts on the wad down below. I'd love to hear what you think, and I'll heart your comments to let you know I've read them. Now, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge my generous patrons. Aaron Allen, Agile Jackson, Agu XYZ, Alec Wehrman, Alephany, Alex Max, Alex Topfer, Artisan Talzar, Bo Higginbotham, Beatbeard, Ben Barrett, Big Sai and his trusty Glock, Big Pash Plays, Birdburn, Blind as a Mat, Builder Sith, Bitefire, Kappa Bitch, Cheese Wheel, Chris Duthat, Chris O'Neill, Christophine Place, Cutman Mike, Damo, Dan, Dario Romero, Delirium, Doot Yourself, Dorothy Miller, Dustin Rush, Egg Boy, Ember, Emeljan, Emma Essex, Endless Moose, Felix Wilson, Flying Dread, Francis T218, General Roasterock, Glenn Marmon, Goody, Griffin Upchurch, Yaksho, In Captivity, Jeff Hibbert, Jeff Sharilla, Jose Ballestero, Josh Ballard, Jude, Just Some Schmuck, Just Great 98, Camille Bernadotte, Killplane, Quan, Leon Staten, Logan Lazalda, Lumnal, Mark Rowland, Master Drew 117, Matthew Gower, 
Maddie Light 1990, McJimbles, Meta 47, Michael Akins, Mike OTR, Miracle Water, Mixer, MK 2021, Moco Mothman MM 47, Mosicon, Mr. Bob Cyndaquil, Myolden, Nafferty, Neurometry, Knights 108, Not Obelisk, Number 26, NX Avery, Omnibot, Painful Hill 72, Pezaveng Zhaj, Phantom Puff, Philip Coffee, Pixel Perfect PT, Pyro She, Quibs, Randy A, Red Doomed Earth, Reese, Reese Anderson, Richard Fry, Roadworks, Rune, Sega Monkey, Sid Menon, Small Venom, Snacker Fork, Some Spoony Bard, Spectier, Spinner 8, Stone Mason, Stupid Nick, Sunriser, Sylvester Priss, Tara Kishino, That Guy Known as Will, The Kleptologist, The Fiery Charmeleon, The Dinosaur Heretic, The Freeman 500, The Sapphire Tri, TJG 1289, Trilby Trillion, Turbine 2K5, Cow, Why Bemo Not a Crab, William Huber, and Wonka Shack. Thank you. I appreciate you all very much. This is Mount Payne 27, and I'll see you all in the next episode of Dean of Doom.